Oh boy. Oh boy, Gary, you're in trouble now. I've, uh, I've dug myself into quite the hole here, people. I moved apartments and, well, let's just say my plan to upgrade my art studio, well, it's been torpedoed. Hey, Jeff, this guy forgot size matters. <laughs> you dumb, dumb dummy. <laughs> I don't know what I'm gonna do, but I'm gonna do my best. I'm gonna film it. And fingers crossed at the end of all this, I'm gonna be able to make a professional grade art studio in a tiny apartment. I know what you're thinking. Garrett, I thought you were out there balling in South Korea. What are you doing with such a small apartment? Well, I'm about to go watch a soccer game with my friends. Let me give you a tour of the location, Gangnam Style. I found the place. Bingo. I dig the energy of Seoul and it's a great place for young artists. So I've decided at least for the meantime to stick around. That said, with such a small place, I'm gonna have to get to work, measure the place and figure out the best way I can economically take care of this space and make it a usable uh, place to live in as well as to do my work. So let's give you guys a tour. First up, we got the entrance, which goes straight into the kitchen. Got a miniature fridge, my humidor. And then here's the main room. Got the bed, disaster. Got my couch coffee table cramped into the corner. Uh, painting studio cramped into the corner, trying to finish that painting. Uh, desk, bathroom, and over here you have my closet slash drying hanging rack. All of my old paintings and artworks that still need to be hung. And uh, the laundry room, which is also offensively small. Being that my room had no storage, I needed a wardrobe that was big enough, but not too big as to waste space. I ended up going with this model from Ikea. It was the proper size and had the storage space inside to hold not only my clothes, but also a guest floor mat and extra blankets. I also like the center mirror design, which is useful and opens up the space visually a bit. And I picked the dark brown model because it matched my coffee table. The next mission is to reassemble my coffee table. I'm a big cigar smoker as well as pipe tobacco smoker. I'm going to take all of the cigar bands that I've collected over the years and I'm going to put them under the glass of this coffee table. Each band displayed is unique to a specific cigar blend and grouped by brand name. Many brands feature great artwork and designs, which is why I started keeping them in the first place. Now this doesn't help me make better paintings of course, but it's important to keep your art studio creative, unique, and comfortable. This coffee table also has just enough room to display some of my pipe collection and my six roll watch box. Next, I needed to hang the curtains. I ordered them online and they section off my bed area from the working slash living area nicely. They also hide my mosquito net during the warmer seasons and make a better background for filming these kinds of videos. Side note, wow, the uh, installation of the curtains, the uh, track that they're hanging from, total pain in the butt to hang by myself. Next time I'll uh, be sure to bring a friend. Lastly, I needed to fill the empty walls. My art has evolved many times over the last decade, so I decided to keep different art styles with each other. I have some digitally painted portraits of my friends, 
these two works I wanted to show a somewhat impressionist style featuring Korea nightlife back in 2020. Over my computer, I hung a funny digital self-portrait from 2015. If you've been following me for a while, you'd know I worked in the realm of character art for roughly eight years, and my favorite pieces from that period I hung around my bed. First, an album art design I did for a great underground band called Tokyo Lucky Hole. Be sure to check them out. Next, a character art series I've lately been referring to as Garrett's Angels. Get it? Charlie's Angels, Garrett Angel, you get it. I left the largest wall for my latest oil paintings, and there's room to spare for future works that I've already started. This is also the best wall to showcase works in the background of videos, as well as for the enjoyment of visiting guests. Finally, after months of work, I had a space that was both functional to live in, able to host friends, showcase my work, and usable as a background for filming videos. But Garrett, where's this painting studio you promised? Great question. Now let's take a look at the final corner of my room, the hotshot corner office. Is that the expression, hotshot, or is it is it Big Shot Corner Office? Comment below what the expression is. While you're at it, uh, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. <sighs> First, I needed a new easel. After some research and comparing, I knew I was going to need to get an H-frame easel to paint larger canvases, as well as to have a smaller footprint in the corner of my room. For reference, here's what my old studio looked like. My first easel was a French box easel, and I picked that design thinking that because it can pack up small, it would be better for a small apartment. Well, in practice, it didn't work out. It's a great design, but it was made for painting outdoors. Indoors, however, it actually does have a very large footprint when open, and that made things quite difficult. Furthermore, a French box easel can only handle small to medium sized canvases. I am happy I still have my French box though. Uh, I'd like to do some plein air painting in the future, and it was at least a stepping off point to figure out what I really needed. It's important in art and in life to just take action, make mistakes, and course correct on the way. Oh, speaking of mistakes, my H-frame easel finally arrived and it was time to get cracking. I immediately hit some roadblocks, however, when assembling and nearly started to panic. When at all times possible, do not order things from China. I ordered this from AliExpress because it saved me about $400 worth of shipping costs. So I figured I'd take a gamble and um, so far it's not paid off. I'm having to score my own little drilling holes because this, uh, poorly made Chinese easel, the holes don't line up. I don't have a, I don't have a drill, so I'm having to improvise here. I'm using a, a nail that I happen to have, some drywall nails, to essentially just make some score marks to guide my uh, hand screwing. We'll see how successful this is. All right, looks like we're getting somewhere. Thankfully, the rest of the build went fine enough, and I'm happy to say that the easel has been holding up fine for the last six months and showing no sign of failing on me soon. I ended up purchasing and installing these two relatively cheap adjustable desk lamps that I could clamp mount over my easel. The general rules for lighting are as follows. First, you want your light to be coming from overhead so as to not block your vision with shadows while you're painting. Next, you'll want to be able to adjust the lights easily for different size projects. The angle of the light is important to not have too much glare, but from where you're looking, this will always change. You'll also want to get bulbs with a neutral temperature, around 6,000. 6,000 Kelvins, I believe? 6,000 degrees means the light is going to be white. 
If the light is either too cool or too warm, your eyes will not be able to see the colors you're mixing correctly, and that could lead to a surprise down the road when the finished painting is under different lights. For electricity, I snaked around an extension cable and velcroed it to the back of my easel in a place that does not hinder the adjustability of the easel. A downside to the H-frame easel is that unlike with the French box easel, there's no storage built in. I searched all over the internet and furniture stores around here in Korea for something fancy and the right height to use as storage and as a stand to set my pallet on. Ultimately, the best I could get were these cheap storage shelves. They don't look great, but they hold enough and they are on wheels like my easel making it easier to clean behind and adjust. Here I can also place my iPad and plug it into the extra port behind my easel. This makes following reference images or sketches much easier than turning around and looking at my computer. I still have to convert the top of my computer desk to be part of my studio, which is annoying, but it's very doable. In fact, now setup time only takes minutes. Some final touches to the studio include one, an adjustable camera clamp for filming or taking photos while I work, two, a blank white wall behind with an installed nail and white card. This is for photographing finished works. Three, some extra lights for photography and video filming. Four, the easel can also lay flat when I need to varnish paintings. Five, a mall stick or cane. This allows me to rest my hand on something besides wet paint while painting the tiny details. And if you looked at my work, you know I'm all about tiny details. While I'm very pleased with the overall setup, it does have some limitations. First, I still don't have much space to do large, messy paintings with dripping or anything like that. I have an extra canvas to lay as a drop cloth, but with my wardrobe so close, I sometimes have to worry about making a mess. Thankfully, my painting style is pretty neat, so it hasn't been too worrisome. Second, ventilation. Ventilation is, of course, very important because when working in oils, you're working with potentially dangerous or undesirable fumes coming from the paint, the mediums, and the solvents. To combat this, I always paint with my windows open, my bathroom fan on, my back door open, and with a floor fan on. It's not ideal, but gets the job done. Third, there's no drying rack. Thankfully, I can place my drying works in my also tiny laundry room. If you don't have that, I would put the works in a bathroom or kitchen. The paint fumes will eventually fill any room without ventilation, and you don't want to breathe that in while sleeping. Thankfully, I also don't yet have an artistic style that requires me to be working on many paintings at once. In fact, my artistic style is way too slow for that. Well, there you have it, my shoebox painting studio. Be sure to drop in the comments if you have any tips on how I can make my studio better. Also, uh, I'd like to hear if you had overcome any challenges in making your studios. I'd very much like to hear from other artists. If you'd like to follow me for day-to-day -day updates, I'd recommend checking out my Instagram, gb underscore brush. I like to keep the gram pretty lively with all the silliness me and my friends are getting up to here in Seoul, South Korea, so be sure to check it out. Don't forget to subscribe if you like the content and want to see more such as this. You can check out my other videos here or here. I don't know where it's going to be, but keep making that art. We'll see you next time. Adios.